NASA's Project Artemis plans to land another man on the moon and the first woman on the lunar surface. And that is not all. The project will also support the construction of a permanent site on the moon that will allow astronauts to carry out specific missions and enough research to understand and develop our solar system and planet respectively. This video is going to talk about the Artemis project and how NASA plans to achieve the Artemis base camp on the moon. NASA is not alone in the goal of establishing a human presence on the moon. So sit tight and you'll see other agencies who've got plans to develop on the moon. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe for more high quality content. NASA plans to have a lunar outpost. The concept details a permanent base for human presence on the lunar surface by 2024. The concept of creating a long-term human presence on the moon can easily be traced back to the late 50s, including the Lunex project, which was conceptualized in the 1958s. It was a United Air Force plan to construct an underground Air Force base on the moon. Furthermore, in 1959, the US Army's Ballistic Missile Agency organized a task force called Project Horizon to check out the feasibility of building a military base on the moon. The Project Horizon planned on using a series of Saturn launches to pre-construct an outpost while still in Earth's orbit. Coupled with the intention of delivering and landing a completely assembled on the moon, more Saturn launches every month would then transport supplies to the inhabitants. The United States portion of the lunar surface is to be designated the Neil A. Armstrong Lunar Outpost, and it was an element of the George W. Bush era, which was changed by Barack Obama to be the space policy. The agency has since carried out several missions to familiarize with the lunar surface, and recently it announced Project Artemis, where it plans to send more astronauts to the moon. The Artemis program itself is a planned crewed spaceflight program led by NASA. The project also gave room for partnership, where the US commercial spaceflight companies and international partners including the European Space Agency, JAXA, and the Canadian Space Agency partner with NASA to achieve the goal of landing the first woman and the next man on the moon by 2024, specifically at the lunar South Pole region. NASA believes that the Artemis project is the next step towards the long-term goal of establishing a sustainable presence on the moon, as it will lay the foundation for private companies to build a lunar economy and eventually send humans to Mars. A major target is Shackleton Crater, and in 2028, NASA plans to launch the lunar surface asset, which is a small habitat on the moon and on either an SLS Block 1B or through an Artemis support mission on a commercial launcher. If the plan works, it would be the first crewed lunar base. NASA would then build a station in lunar orbit, which will serve as a communications hub, temporary habitation module, and holding area for rovers and other robots intended for use by the outpost on the lunar surface. The station is called the Lunar Gateway. The Gateway will also serve as a station for MA analog missions, where the practice missions will see astronauts mimic the duration of the journey to Mars. The first permanent human space colony on the moon has its benefits to study and research. One primary purpose of the moon settlement is to encourage tourism on the moon by private companies. Interestingly, the discovery of water at the lunar surface and the lunar poles renew NASA's interest in the moon, and since 2008, the agency has sought out strategies to achieve its goal. The idea of a moon base might sound rather absurd, but taking a trip back in history will reveal how far humanity has come to understand the universe. A base on the moon is just another step in understanding the solar system, and it is a large, huge step. The colonization of any natural body, especially the moon, will provide lots of construction materials for future projects. From the moon's surface, the energy required to transport objects into space is quite affordable, compared to transportation from Earth into orbit. Therefore, a moon base will serve as a source of construction materials. Launching rockets from the moon would require less locally produced propellant than launching rockets from Earth. NASA has proposed the use of electric acceleration devices that will propel objects from the lunar surface without any need for rockets. Additionally, the moon's closeness to the Earth has its own advantages when you consider the Earth-crossing asteroids that pass by Earth occasionally. No concrete plans have been given about the structure of the outpost. However, numerous proposals have revealed designs that have evolved with humanity's knowledge of the lunar surface. Some have it that astronauts could live in spacecraft landers, although the hazards of the lunar surface, including sharp temperature shifts, a large, high level of radiation, and lack of atmosphere might demand more sophisticated habitats. Even constructing an underground base on the moon will be difficult because first, the lunar surface will have to be dug. After that, supporting materials will be needed to avoid any collapse. 
NASA has mentioned that the Artemis base camp itself would be a Lunar Foundation surface habitat that will host four astronauts at the South Pole for weekly visits. To build a sustainable presence on the Moon, the outpost will need to be filled with basic needs for those who will live there, including water and communication. The facilities will require infrastructure for power, waste disposal and communications, including radiation shielding and a landing pad. The lunar surface base will be a site for testing new technologies to deal with the incessant lunar dust, as well as the long and cold lunar nights. The Artemis Base Camp will be used to turn local materials into resources like water, and further develop new power and construction technologies. A base on the Moon's surface will most likely be covered by lunar soil, which is composed of silica and compounds containing iron. These materials will need to be reformed to make solid glass-like habitats that can then protect astronauts from radiation. Building the base deep in the crater will further enable partial shielding against radiation. The Artemis Base Camp will be accompanied and supported by two mobility systems, which are a lunar terrain vehicle to facilitate astronaut movement across the lunar surface and a habitable mobility platform that will support trips away from the base. NASA currently envisions Mars surface missions at lasting just 30 to 45 days from the Moon and a Mars launch from the Moon will reduce risks. The base camp could also include a hopper that will deliver science and technology payloads all over the Moon, where a crew at the outpost will operate. Spacecrafts might as well be refueled on the lunar surface with locally manufactured propellants. There will also be lunar radio telescopes, which will be placed remotely and maintained from the Artemis base camp. While the goal of NASA is about getting to Mars, constructing a lunar outpost proves to be a huge leap for human space exploration. Humans, as well as robots, will be used to find water and other critical resources for long-term exploration. The base will also stand as an investigative point to solve the moon's mysteries and learn more about the universe and planets. It's important to note that NASA isn't the only one involved with getting a piece of the pie on the lunar surface, as there are other agencies, including the China National Space Administration, that commenced the changed program for exploring the moon to investigate the prospect of lunar mining, specifically for mining isotope helium-3 for use as an energy source on Earth. The director of the program, Luan Engi, once said that humans must learn to leave Earth and set up self-sufficient extraterrestrial homeland. The Russian space agency is also interested in the moon, however. NASA has explicitly expressed its desire to land on the south pole of the lunar surface, which proved to be filled with resources unlike other areas of the moon. Many scientists and engineers are currently working with NASA to accurately determine the location of the Artemis base camp, and amongst the numerous things to take into account, the location must be where there is continuous sunlight and enough darkness that holds water ice. The South Pole region agreeably has a lot of well-illuminated areas, and some of the parts seem more light than others, or less, depending on the part. It has been further proven that at some higher elevations, as well as on crater rims, astronauts can witness longer periods of light, although the bottom of some deeper craters are covered in constant darkness, due to the fact that sunlight at the South Pole hits at a very low angle, and that only brushes the rims. While a base camp site will demand lots of light, it is also important that astronauts find it easy to take short trips into permanently dark craters. It is expected that these shadowed craters will have numerous reservoirs of frozen water that explorers could use for life support. Currently, there are plans to land spacecrafts on a relatively flat part of an illuminated crater rim. Thank you for watching one of our videos. While you're still here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there!